if you are a student of physics mathematics or engineering and you are capable of plotting a graph or a 3d surface or visualizing any kind of a data point which may arise as a result of an equation then that is a very very powerful skill because if you can visualize something then that brings a different level of clarity and understanding a topic or a subject many times therefore when you are studying a topic or you have a set of data points or an equation if you could only plot that in an appropriate manner in some sort of a software then that would go a long way in helping you develop understanding of the subject there are different kinds of programming languages out there that can help you in visualizations today i'm going to show you how to plot 2d 3d graphs polar plots as well as animation plots in scilab now scilab is a free a numerical computational software package that is available freely for anyone to download and use and the programming language in scilab is also very very simple i have already made one video where i have described the basics of scilab for beginners i have talked about mathematical operations arrays matrices initializing different kinds of variables i have also talked about conditional statements like if else then statement conditional loops like for loop while loop i have also talked about functions and uh, various other things which is necessary for a beginner in this video i'm going to show you how to plot a set of data points and the different syntaxes and commands that are going to be very very helpful for you so let us start uh, with uh, by opening the editor the editor is where we are going to uh, so write write our uh, program multi line programs and then we're going to execute them the very first thing that i want to do is because i am interested in let's suppose plotting a 2d plot right now i want to plot a 2d plot or 2d graph then i just need an x axis and a y axis so for an example let's suppose i create an array okay so this is an array i want to have let's suppose 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 points here okay so x axis contains these eight points i want another array corresponding to y for every single point of x so here i can uh, define any kind of a function so let's suppose i want the square of x so the square of 1 is 1 then i have 4 then i have 9 then i have 16 then i have 25 then i have 36 49 and 64 so here i have uh, 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 the x axis which is essentially an array and the y axis which is essentially uh, another array now the size of the x axis and the size of the y axis must be very equal to each other now if i want to plot them in some kind of a graph in scilab the command is p l o t x comma y if i do that if i save and execute then i should get this particular graph so this scilab basically provides us with this very powerful and helpful uh, graphic window where they can plot any kind of a data point as long as you feed that in an appropriate manner now the default in scilab is to basically connect all these points with a straight line but if i want to specify which points has been uh, connected i am just going to add in the plot properties o okay within as a string of characters so it's going to specify every single point so by point i mean 1 1 and 2 4 and 3 9 and 416 with this o and then connect it with a straight blue line which is the default so this is the graph that you have now sometimes i want to plot in a range where there is a large number of data points so i don't want to individually write from 1 to 8 so what i'm going to do let's suppose i want to start from 0 and i want to go to 10 but i want 1000 points okay so or 100 points so what i can do is i can define the step size here 0.01 let's suppose let's not make it that big 0.1 that's it okay now there are different kinds of commands associated with it so double dash is for a comment so i'll give you and provide an alternate command also so lin space so there is another command which is the lin space so if i say lin space x is equal to lin space i say i want to go from 0 to uh, 10 i want 100 points so what is the difference between these two commands well this creates an array starting from 0 ending at 10 with a step size of 0.1 the lin space also creates an array starting from 0 ending at 10 with 100 points in between so what this does it it specifies the step size what this does is it specifies the size of the array that is i want 100 elements or 100 numbers within the array this specifies a step size this specifies a number of elements you can use either of them whichever you are interested in so this specifies an array now i want some sort of a array corresponding to y also 
let's suppose because I wanted to plot the x square. So I'm just going to say x square here. All right. Now the problem is x is an array. So array square, what does it really mean? Uh, it's, it's supposed to be a matrix operation, right? Because this is a row matrix. So it doesn't really mean anything. What I want to do is I don't want to do a matrix operation here. I want to do element wise operation. So I'm going to specify dot here. So whenever you put dot some operation, it means that if this is an array or a matrix, then this operation will be performed on the individual elements. So you'll get element wise operation. So now if I perform the same command, then I end up getting this kind of a graph. So you see this, you see that uh, uh, there are 100 points here starting from zero ending at 10 with a step size of 0.1 all have been connected in this appropriate now I can take this a little bit further by defining some kind of a function. So let's suppose instead of having a straightforward uh, x square, I want to define a function. So let me define a function. The function is I have already showed you how to define function in the previous lecture. Y is equal to f of x. Let's suppose I want to define a function. Let's say y is equal to cos x. And I want to define uh, something that resembles damping. Okay, you are familiar with uh, damped oscillations. So for that, I will introduce exponential minus x, uh, again, dot star cos x. Okay. So I can create a, let's suppose, let me make it cos uh, twice x, or let's suppose cos thrice x. And here, let me make the damping a little bit uh, 0 0.1 star. All right. So now I have defined a function. Okay. And this is the array corresponding to the x-axis. I need to evaluate the function. The way to evaluate the function is y is equal to fx. This will evaluate it. In some uh, uh, some of your uh, versions, this may not necessarily work. If it doesn't work, then you can apply this command y is equal to f e v a l x comma f. If you apply this as an alternate command, this will evaluate the function in the range of x and create a new array having the same size as x and every element in y will be this function evaluated on every element of x. Now, if you plot, let's suppose uh, uh, this particular function, here you have it. This is the damped oscillation. You see this? This is the damped oscillation. I can make further modifications. Let's suppose I want to uh, increase the damping. I'll just say minus x here. And OK, I don't want to increase it that much. Uh, let's suppose I want to say 0 0.5 uh, star. All right, so this increases the damping. But clearly, as you can see, every time I run the program, it overlaps with the previous graph. I don't want to do that. I want to clear the previous data and the graph as well. So for that, I need a set of commands. So to clear the previous variables, the command is clear. To clear the console window, the command is CLC. And to clear the graph, the command is CLF. All right, this will sort of give me a fresh graph. All right. So if I plot it, I see this, this is the damped harmonic oscillator. Now I want to show you various kinds of plot properties. So by default, if I don't give mention any kind of a plot property, if I just say plot x, y, I'll just get a blue line. The blue line connects uh, all the uh, points in the x array and the y array, right? But what if I want a different colored line? Let me show you how. So what you do is plot x comma y and comma and within single inverted commas. Now here I can spe specify the plot property. So if I say k, this will give me a black line. All right. If I say b, this will give me the blue line, which is also the default color. If I say r, this will give me the red line. If I say o, this is, uh, no, if I say y, this is going to give me the yellow line. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. If I apply G, this is going to give me the green line. If I say M, this is going to give me the magenta colored line. And if I say C, this is going to give me cyan. So there are different kinds of colors which are predefined in the library of Scilab. If you just type the letter, this will create the plot in that color. What if I want to change the design aspects of it? So if I want a default blue colored line, but instead of a straight line, I want a dashed line. So if I just type double dash, this is going to give me a dashed line, as you can see here. All right. If I want the coordinates to be just circles, I'll just do this. And then you see the all the points uh, corresponding to the X and the Y array have been uh, uh, plotted using circles. Instead of circles, I want something else. Let's suppose I want, uh, I, I type D, this is going to give me these, these diamond shapes structures. You see these diamond shaped 
uh, coordinates instead of this if I say if I type something else so these are also going to give me these sort of triangular shaped structures if I type something like uh, this this is also going to give me a triangular shaped structure you see this and if I say let's suppose plus you'll have plus okay uh, as the coordinates or if I say let's suppose this is nothing but uh, star the points will be specified by star so there are different kinds of symbols in the library of scilab that can be used to uh, plot the graphs as well as distinguish between different kinds of plots in the same graph so if i want to let's suppose connect these uh, stars with a dashed line and i want to make it red then this is the way it is so this specifies the nature of the line this specifies the symbol representing the coordinate and this specifies the color okay so this is what you get all right and uh, if I want something else, let's suppose I want O and R, this is what I get. All right. Now, in the same graph, I can plot multiple uh, sort of functions. So if I want to make a comparison, these differences in symbols and coordinates and colors is always helpful if you are trying to plot multiple uh, sort of uh, functions in the same graph. So let's suppose I plot this, but I also want to plot, let's suppose, uh, plot uh, x comma let's suppose I want to plot the uh, uh, cos x okay just cos x so what I have is a function which is not necessarily cos x is the damping of cos x but now I want to plot just cos x and not just cos x I want to say I have 0 0.5 times cos x all right so if I do this uh, this will be default okay here I want to specify let's suppose uh, this is a uh, I don't know this is something like uh, a blue black colored line that's it if I do that, I'll get, you see, cos x here. <laughs> I have both these functions. Okay, let me let me create a little bit different. So let me say this is cos 3x, okay? So there, that will be a little bit better, I think. All right, so on one hand, you have these damping, and one, on the other hand, you have undamped oscillations. So differences in colors and symbols are really, really helpful whenever you're trying to differentiate various kinds of plots in the same graph. There are further uh, sort of uh, plot properties. So if you want to create a grid, so that let's suppose you want to see the variation of these data points as you go along, then you can also create a grid here. The command is x grid. So if I just type x grid, this will give me a default grid. You can see that this grid has been created just like you'll have it in a graph paper let's suppose these uh, parallel lines intersecting each other at uh, right angles and the x grid also contains uh, various kinds of properties so let's suppose you have these three numbers two comma three comma four then this will specify three things first it will specify color second it will specify thickness of the lines and third it will specify the style so i personally like to use uh, one comma one comma three but you may sort of experiment around and try to come up with the grid that looks best for you okay now since i have multiple uh, plots in the same graph i want to be able to specify which one represents what all right so for that there is another command that is available to us which is legend so the legend command is written as essentially within curve brackets you have this uh, square brackets which specifies an array and within the square brackets you have these strings of characters so how many strings of characters we require we require as many number of plots are there in the graph right now I have two so I let me write two strings of characters so let's say the first is a damped oscillations right damped oscillations okay and the second is undamped oscillations right So what you will you will end up getting is that this will be written on the graph so if you want to take a plot or you want to take a printout of this you will get this written on the top of the graph that will help some other person to be able to understand which graph represents what or which plot represents what so the red colored one this represents the damped oscillations the black one this represents the undamped oscillations right now you can also change uh, in which position this box is created by using default numbers here so after this array ends you just create another sort of an array with number let's suppose I, I take one so one corresponds to top right hand side corner if I say two this will give me I uh, see the top left hand side corner this box has been created if I say let's suppose uh, three this will create a similar thing but in the bottom left hand side corner and if I say four this should give me bottom right hand side corner which is this one uh, so let's keep it one okay so there you have these sort of functionalities to create a desirable 
sort of a graph with various kinds of uh, uh, sort of information. If I want to specify, let's suppose the x-axis or y-axis or I want to give a title. So for that also, I have a command which is x title, curve brackets, and then I have three strings of characters separated by commas. The first string of characters basically gives us the title. Okay, you can write whatever you want here. And the second is the x-axis and the third is the y axis so this information whatever i write here will appear on the graph thereby making it a little bit more visually informative and appealing do you see that title is written here y axis here x axis here. now what if i want to plot uh, multiple sort of functions but not necessarily in the same graph but in sort of different graphs plotted side by side so for that, there's a command called subplot. So subplot essentially divides the entire graphical window into uh, in the form of a matrix. So you can have uh, one cross two boxes or two cross two boxes or any sort of a combination you want. So let's make this a comment. I don't want this to interfere with my uh, command. Let's make this a comment. Okay, so for that, so I have two uh, plots, right? So I want to create a uh, two boxes side by side so one cross two sort of a matrix or one cross two sort of a grid okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say subplot okay so what i want is one cross two right and for the first position i want this plot okay and then again i'm going to copy and paste it here just before the second and here i'm going to say two okay so what this does is it specifies that i've divided the graphical window into uh, a one sort of a row and two columns boxes and this plot is going to be plotted in the first position and similarly for the second plot is going to be plotted in the second position All right so let's make this a comment so if i do this what should i get so if you look at the graph all right this is the graph that we get you see this so essentially i've separated both the plots into this one uh, uh, row and two column kind of a box i can do multiple things so for example if i want to specify uh, two cross two okay so i let me specify two cross two let me just copy paste it here just to show you as an example so right now i have four different plots okay let's say this is uh, five and this is blue colored and this is uh, something like uh, Okay, this is like magenta color or something like that. So I have four plots. So for the first two cross two first position, two cross two second position, two cross two third position, and two cross two fourth position, I should get four different plots. Here I have it. I have four different plots uh, in this manner. So you can change the functions uh, accordingly to come up with any number of plots side by side in any sort of a fashion. Uh, and then you can get a printout and do whatever you want as it is necessary. You can also specify the X title, Y title and legend individually. Okay, so let's suppose if I say uh, X title, so if I want to say X title here, so this will only provide this information to the first plot. Okay, so this only provides this information to the first plot here, as you can see, not the other three. But if I do it individually for every single plot, how do you do that? You just paste it after that plot command before the next subplot command. And then this will uh, uh, provide this information uh, in the graph. And there you have it. Every individual plots have their own title, have their own X axis and Y axis labeling. By the way, there are other plot commands also. There is a plot 2D command that you can also use here instead of the plot command. I personally like the plot command that is more than sufficient. There is also an fplot command. If you just want to specify the function and you plot the function, there is an fplot 2D command. You can use, you can check that in the help window. Uh, so let's move on to the uh, 3D sort of a visualization. So I'll go to the console for the 3D visualization because I want to show you something. For the 3D visualization, you have to understand, first I want to specify an x-axis and I want to specify the x-axis by giving a, a three numbers as an array. Let's suppose it's a three numbers as an array. Okay, I want to specify the y-axis. Let's suppose again three numbers, one, two, three. Right. Now what x array and y array does is it creates the x-axis and the y-axis for the x-y plane. But in the x-y plane, there are how many coordinates corresponding to this x and y-axis? There are nine coordinates right so there is one coordinate 
one one there is another coordinate one two there's another coordinate one three so therefore when i specify z i cannot just say that the size of the z is three the size of the z must be uh, three cross three nine so z must be a square matrix right three cross three so let me create a square matrix let's suppose i want to create a square matrix of zeros so if i say three cross three so essentially z is nothing but a three cross three matrix so x is an array y is an array but z is a three cross three matrix now if i say plot 3d x comma y comma z then what i'm going to get is x and y which are two arrays they will create the xy plane and z contains the information for every single point on the xy plane it will create out a surface so if i run this then i end up getting this because z contains all the zero elements i get this surface okay this is a y z is equal to zero plane this is nothing but the z is equal to zero plane with the default colors etc this is a z is equal to zero so i can create sort of uh, bigger sort of arrays you know so let's suppose if i create x is equal to uh, one, 10 okay and uh, so it contains 10 elements i create y is equal to again 1 to 10 okay it contains 10 elements and z is equal to a square matrix but i want to generate random numbers so I, I create a 10 cross 10 square matrix with random numbers uh, in them. And then I want to plot, let's suppose, uh, plot 3D X, Y, Z. So I get this kind of a surface, of course, because the numbers are generated randomly. So this is a, some sort of a uh, surface that has been created by these random uh, points. Now, I want to be able to control it in a better fashion because I am interested in plotting various surfaces, right? Surfaces are usually defined by an equation or some kind of a function. So for that, I personally prefer a different command instead of the plot 3D command. You can use the plot 3D command, no issues. But I personally prefer what is known as the surface command, uh, which can be created using mesh grid. So let me explain what a mesh grid is. So if I say, let's suppose x is equal to 1 uh, to 3, this is an array containing three numbers. If I say y is equal to 1 to 3, uh, this is an array containing uh, three numbers. But what mesh grid does is, let's suppose I say capital X comma capital Y. By the way, Scilab is case sensitive. So capital X is not the same as small x. Okay, And I say mesh grid, mesh grid, uh, small x comma small y. What it does is it creates the xy plane, essentially corresponding to the x axis and corresponding to the y axis. Okay, let me show you. If I do mesh grid, so essentially what you get is you see x, capital X and capital Y. So this is one point. All right, one one. This is an uh, this is another point two one. This is another point three one. This is another point one two. This is another point two two. This is another point three two. So it essentially creates these new variables capital X and capital Y, and that contains the information about the X Y plane. Now what I need to do is I need to use a surf command. Okay, if I say surf, uh, first I need to have a Z. Okay, so Z is equal to let's suppose again uh, zeros. 3 comma 3 capital X comma capital Y comma capital Z this should give me the surface which is nothing but the zero plane now this is something that I really really like because it can help us define different kinds of functions so let's go back to the editor so this is just the x-axis it's an array going from minus 4 pi to plus 4 pi with a step size of 0.1 I want to specify a similar kind of a y-axis let's suppose this is equal to y and then uh, I want to create the mesh grid that I just now mentioned, which is capital X comma capital Y. You can use other variables also, no issues. Mesh grid, small x comma Y. Now I want to specify what Z is as a function of capital X and Y. So I have a very interesting function to plot. Uh, so this is basically sine root over X square plus Y square divided by root over X square plus Y square. Because X and Y are matrices, so I'm going to do element wise operation. So this is X dot to the power 2 plus uh, y dot to the power 2 but this is a square root right so I'm going to say square root of this square root of this sqrt of this and again this divided by again this divided by the same thing so I want to plot this essentially all right so let's do the plot s u r f capital X comma capital Y comma capital Z this should give us the surface that we are interested in all right I've gotten the surface but 
the Scilab has filled the surface with uh, its own default colors. I want to control the kind of colors that I want to see. So for, for that, again, comma, I want the face color, F-A-C-E-C-O-L, to be, let's suppose, uh, cyan, all right? And then I want the edge color, the lines, basically, P-D-G-E-C-O-L, to be blue, all right? If I do this, then I should be able to see it visually a little bit better. Run it, all right, here it goes. Uh, just a moment again so here it goes so this is the surface that i have all right can you see that all right to make it a little bit more visually appealing let me uh, increase the step size let me make it two and also increase the range so let me go from let's suppose minus six to plus six and minus six to plus six and let's make it 0.5 okay step size 0.5 this should give us a little bit better visual representation yeah there, there you have it so this gives you uh the Mexican hat function or you can see you see this this surface imagine you dropped a stone on the surface of a pond and it creates these ripples so it creates this kind of a surface all right by right clicking on the graph you can sort of do a 3d visualization of how it looks any kind of a function or any kind of a 3d surface that you have that you want to plot you can easily do that either using the plot 3d command or using the surface command in Scilab uh, in just two seconds, <laughs> okay? So this is a very, very powerful tool when it comes to visualizing different kinds of data and information. Further, two more commands that I want to show you today is uh, the polar plot, okay? Let me show you the polar plot here. So polar plot essentially just plots uh, nothing but, uh, you know, a polar plot for you, theta versus r, okay? Now, what is theta and r? Of course, they're not yet defined, so let me define theta. So theta is equal to, let's suppose it goes from 0 to uh, 2 pi, 0 to which steps as 0 0.1, 2 star percentage pi, all right? And then let's suppose r is equal to some function of theta, let's suppose. Let's suppose I say sine uh, theta uh, square, let's suppose, that is r, okay? I'm just doing it in the console because it's not that very lengthy. All right, a semicolon because I don't want to go. Okay, there was supposed to be a bracket here, a parenthesis. All right, this is working. So polar plot, okay, polar plot theta comma r. This should give me a polar plot here. Just a moment, let me make a new plot. This gives me the polar plot uh, theta versus r, r sine square. So you, this might be useful for you sometimes uh, if you this is what you need. There is another kind of possibility in Scilab which is to create animation plots. So let's suppose x is equal to, it goes from 0, uh, 0 0.1 up to 10, let's suppose, all right. And uh, y is equal to sine x, let me take the most simplest of the functions, sine x. Then there's a command called comet x comma y. So what it does is instead of giving you a static graph, it gives you a live animation of that particular graph. So let me just run it and see what we get. Ah, there you have it. Okay, did you see it? Let me create a large number of data points so that it goes uh, a little bit slowly. So let me 0 0.01. Okay, and then I have uh, sine x. Now comet x comma y again. Did you see it? It was a live, live animation. Let me create uh, a little bit different. Uh, let's suppose I go from 0 to 30 or 20 and... Uh, 0 point again, 0 0.05, a little bit slower, or 0 0.1, and um, sine x, and if I plot this, so there you have it. You see this live animation of this plot that I wanted to do. So there you have it. Different kinds of plot properties are available in Scilab for you to plot whatever it is you are interested in. In fact, I can create multiple plots in the same graph. So so that is all for today. This is how you can use Scilab as a platform to visualize different kinds of information and uh, use it for your own advantages and studies and research. That is all for today. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to solve different kinds of differential equations in Scilab, first order differential equations, second order differential equations. And that is also going to be very, very important uh, 
uh, skill that you can have that might be helpful for you. So till then, I'll see you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.